and then he's going to let's hear from, I want to hear from my co-host who would like to go first I don't I don't mind going first okay Norwood you go first and then why don't you just throw it to the next person you could say Perkins you could say Paige you could say Olsen Derek whatever okay yeah and then just you guys remember if he says your name then you say whatever but no one's going to comment so then when you're finished just throw it over to your next co-host and we'll end with dave because he'll wrap it up cool okay hey did we uh, test the, the saxophone volume did we yeah obviously i can still do it i got a really bad earache going down on my throat and i just thought i could do it i have it here but Maybe okay. Derek can do it because I'm not feeling that great. Okay. This thing going on. Cool. Derek, do, can you play guitar? I could try. <laughs> <laughs> you can are, you eating, are you eating Cheetos again? No, I'm okay. eating. Okay, Sheila, we should be live. Do you see us? Are we live? <laughs> We're not live. <clears throat> should be live on facebook right now okay i'm on facebook okay now yes we are we are live okay cool oh shit all right well we're live this is, for those for those that are tuned in and watching now a little bit early you're getting a little behind the scenes sort of a view Very here yeah, this is the uh pre-game pre-game show pre-game pre show yeah what, what you eating there derek right now when we do go live, if you want to join us on the air, you're going to be able to ask for the Zoom link. So we're giving you a little sort of VIP treatment here. You get the uh, the initial access before the rest of the public does. Yeah. So, all right. Well, we're we're. I guess I, guess I don't get to out. go pee in the woods before. <laughs> <laughs> now, Derek has been studying to be a method actor. Right now. His his uh character is hungry. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good actor. He's a very good actor. What are you eating there, there Derek? <laughs> it looks like real food. He's it incredible. Looks like real food. The kid can do anything. He can act. Yeah. Act like he's eating. Here, here Derek, okay, put a little bit on that. my stick. You got a marshmallow? <laughs> Give me a little chunk. Uh -oh. Come on, give me a little thing. You guys know it's a little bit of a bag. You know that, right? Would you like a would you like one of these? They're tasty. Put that on my stick. There, here we go. Here we go. It really feels like a <laughs> summertime like a summertime uh, Los Angeles day, doesn't it? And, yeah, oh, it sure is. It's hot. Woo. And then of course we'll do our plug for Kenny Aronoff, because he's our brother. We love him. Yeah. Having to have his rock and roll book here, Sex Drums and Rock and Roll, right here. There you I go. Love it. Everybody's got to read that. Yeah. I, um, Kenny Arnoff is doing also um, a really cool interview in in this this week. Uh, it's gonna be really cool. I can find out when exactly. Actually, who's that for? Yeah, yeah it's the Modern Drummer sponsorship. Oh, I think so. Yeah. Hey, you guys. Why don't you go to your Facebook page and start a watch party? Let's like get everybody to like, kind of. Oh, there I am. I see us. How do you All do right, that? Let's see. Go. I've never started a watch party. You can see us. Hi, Michelle. I see you, Michelle. You're there. Wait, You're how do you us. start it? Yeah, uh, go to the link. Okay, just did it. And it says there should be a button that says start a watch party. Mm -hmm. And then we can all like have it go to our pages and people will be people will be watching. And hey, for those of you that are watching right now, all three of you, no, excuse me, <laughs> seven, seven of you, uh, start a watch party. Ooh, Kenny Gradney. He's in a little early. He's in the waiting room. Nice. Oh. I love it. Well, that's way a, early. That's a prepared musician right there. He's way early. I like that, it. That, that's, that goes along with being the name Kenny, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's for some of us, not me. <laughs> hey, I love it that he's that he's in there. Watch party. How okay, we're trying. There you go. Party. I'm watching it. We got Gino Michelini. What up, my brother Gino? Watching us right now. The the radio legend from back in the day. 
Gino. I love it. What up, Gino? Gino the man. Taught me a lot about music back in the day. We got, we got, we got some very awesome guests today, don't we? This is a lot of fun. Aha. We do we have, have some amazing people guests. People are signing today. in. Welburn joined. Yo. We have some amazing guests today. So I'm going to just tell Kenny hey, real Pascal. quick. Pascal. We're sure, sure not they're all our brothers. All right. I got to watch the party over on my. Look at they're all coming in. Watch party. I'm, I'm waving at all my brothers here. People signing up. I'm seeing they're watching. All our pals are watching. They're lining up. I love it. I can't seem to get it live on mine. All right. Well, it's live. Yeah. And we are five minutes, guys. We're five minutes out from uh, from mm -hmm. launching this baby. All Just go right. to the one that says Boxcast. Yeah. It's the link uh -huh. down. It's the link a little bit below the front page there at the top. I mean, it's just powered by Boxcast. That's the link. Who else do we got here? Who I'm else seeing is all watching? My brothers. How do we see who else is watching? Uh, Warren yeah, I can tell you. Brother Warren signed up. Yeah. Dave Bailey. Holy cow. Dave Pascal, man, they're all, all my brothers are showing up at the party. We got my, uh, okay. who, who do we have? Do we have, we have well, Jerry Warren. Palumbo. Are you out there, Jerry? If you are, I love you. I miss you. It's been a long time. Jim Fulton, my old co-host and partner in the Little Fee Radio Hour. And look, I am wearing my shirt in honor. There aren't many of these, but, I, but, I, but there are oh some. Gosh. I want one of those. Man, these are oh, these brother. don't exist anymore. This shirt's like twenty years old. I know, but someone's got to have an, an XL for there out there. It's crazy. <laughs> oh, Wellburn, I see you, Wellburn. <laughs> Barry Chanel, P phone yeah. family. So Norwood, when you talk, talk. Try and like that's the one thing that you miss. We're gonna all talk loud until we get our mics, so that okay. way. We My just yeah. Here we go. Bring it yeah, in. You hear me? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Will be yo, Pascal. Where are we? I can see. Uh, let's see. We got. Where are we? We're Steve. in about three minutes. We're going to go live. Well, we're already live, but in a three minutes, we're going to start the show. Yeah. So oh, everybody bird. right Jay. now is kind of backstage in the green room with us for the pregame show. I like this. We're on and, the, uh, the You know, and then the real show starts in a few minutes. Yeah, they're in the batter, batter circle. Exactly. On oh, deck. I'm looking at all my brothers here. Wow, this is amazing. We have some of our friends from... A, Brian from says, the help. Shrimp. Brian... Brian is online and he says, yo, what up? So, Perk, there you go. Scorpions. Hey. Rick Simmons. <laughs> Jr. Jerry, we love you, man. Love you, Jerry. I'm so glad you're checking this out. Say Jerry. hey to Eric as well. By the way, we've got a bunch of people out there. If anyone wants to join us on this Zoom link, Sheila will give you the uh, the, the, the code or the link and we'll bring you in potentially at some point during the show. So there you go. We have a special join show tonight for sure. You can actually join the party. You're welcome at our party. Everyone's welcome. Yeah. Exactly. We got people from all over, man. This is crazy. Isn't it amazing how we can do this here? We got people checking in from Italy all over the world, popping in. My buddy Jay Rosenswag, he's in Canada right now. I'm seeing our friends from uh, Amber and all them from uh, Killer Shrimp They're all coming in. My old buddy Dave Pascal, man, 30 years, buddy. All right, you guys, we're less than a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, <coughs> you're up for, here we go. Tim Colgate. Colgate, holy cow. Oh, Colgate. 
Yeah, Colgate, I found, he he brought a flying pig to our show when we were in, in Italy. It was the first time it was a helicopter pig and he was flying around with Gilmore and all of us. Wow. I see, he's on here. It's so crazy, all these people you don't see. You know, trip how this works? Yeah. It's trippy. Trippy, trippy, trippy. You don't have so, to wait to go to their town. They come to our town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, you guys, you ready? Ready. Ready. Everybody we be excited. Are almost there. We are almost there. And here we go. All right, we're going live. And special guest. And there we are. Welcome to the Rockin' Talk Show, episode number four. Woo! Day 90, whatever it is. How we doing? I'm the Moss Man. These are my friends. We got Scott Page, the one and only from Pink Floyd, Super Tramp, and Kenny Olsen from the Twisted Brown Trucker Band. Stephen Perkins over here, Jane's Addiction, Norwood Fisher, Fishbone, Derek Day, Derek Day Music, and the one and only Sheila Conlin, our co-executive producer here. How's everybody doing? You guys all We're great? Good. We're good. Good. We're hanging in there. It's been yeah. uh, it's been a, a crazy couple of weeks since our last Ooh. show, that's for sure. Ooh. But before we do that, I just want to thank our last show, our Think EXP, our guest uh, Eric Mayron joined us. Uh, uh, Roberta Freeman couldn't get on; she was having computer issues. But we talked about Budapest and the Think EXP, and I just want to thank everybody for that. And now, you know, we just want to acknowledge, obviously, it's been a couple of crazy weeks since, uh, since our last show. And we want to acknowledge that we all realize that there's a lot of change taking place. The world is, uh, you know, the world is crazy right now. We've still got COVID out there. Uh, people are out marching, protesting. Uh, and we all here are very much about change for racial justice, change for police reform, and, uh, and doing it in a peaceful, loving way. And, and while we all acknowledge that, this group of people, me personally, Think EXP, we've been involved in change for a while, long before these issues came up. Uh, I, we, I have co-founded a couple of amazing organizations, one called the Harold Robinson Foundation, which is a nonprofit organization that for the last 13 years worked in the inner cities of LA, mostly in Watts, to bring exposure and opportunity and access and love uh, to a community that was really in desperate need of that. And, um, and we're still doing that. And Think EXP, has been a part of supporting the Harold Robinson Foundation for the last couple of years when we were doing the shows at the Domes, the, the Think Floyd shows. So we're, this is all very near and dear to all of us. Uh, yeah. And we've also started a new organization called the Watts Conservatory of Music, which is sort of in the preliminary stages. I don't wanna talk a whole lot about it because it's not quite ready yet, but it's gonna be a free music school in Watts uh, yep. Kids, adults will be able to come in and take free music lessons. And, and, and from our point of view, that's kind of what the world needs right now. We need more music, more love, <laughs> more togetherness, more respect, um, all of these things. So on that note, we want to acknowledge what's going on, but we want to focus on having a fun show today. And that's really what we're going to do. So we're going to kind of go around real quick we're not going to have a debate or a discussion but we want to just all throw 30 seconds out about what we feel about what's going on right now so i'm going to start with norwood yeah so for me uh you know it was it was you david that that uh 
woke me up to what was happening with the Harold Robinson Foundation and gave me an opportunity to give of myself, which, which I thought was an amazing gift. That I like there's there's been nothing more fulfilling. And um really, really to to uh one of the most amazing things was to not just interacting with the kids or interacting with the community, was like you came in and you introduced me to to the police that patrol watch that take that, you know, and you know, some of those police, like one, I, I I didn't really do a whole lot of hanging out with the police in my life on, you know, good terms. Uh, you know, I was mo maybe, mostly maybe fearful uh, because of my personal experiences. So you show, you actually show me something different. And the more that I began to know about at least the police that we were, it, it maybe wasn't the, it, maybe it's not the whole department. I don't know. But the people that I encountered were amazing, beautiful people. They seemed to actually care about the people in the community. And the things that, that they actually were doing was uh, changing the, the uh, culture of, of policing and what's like before I met them, there began to be there. There was very positive uh, things done, so it changed my perception, you know. And and actually, what I saw there from the beginning, I immediately saw something that I I thought could be uh, emulated. And and we, you and I talked about that. Yeah. Police officers on foot. The police saw that they did not see the community as humans. And they, the police understood that the, the, that the community saw them as monsters. Exactly. And they mm -hmm. went forth and put their feet on the ground and <clears throat> actually began to change those things. So one, it was, a, it was an amazing thing to see. You know, I'm like, I am Black Lives Matters because that's my experience. But I didn't, I didn't, you know, I don't come here in, in fuck the police form just because. I'm right. like, yeah. police, you know, police in my life maybe earned some of that, but, you know, I've, I've had personal experiences that actually made me see a broader picture of something that was possible. Nice, nice. All yeah, right, Norm. thanks. Who's next? Bert? Well, after Norwood spoke, I feel speechless. <laughs> um, I, I see myself as a, a spoke in the peace wheel or a piece of the track in the peace train. I bring my drums to different cities around the world. I play music and I see people dance and they dance together and they mosh up and down together. And it's like a school of fish or a flock of birds. We all join forces when I make a rhythm. So I feel very important in the sense that I can bring peace when I show up and play my drums. And if that's what God gave me the, the ability to do is, is play rhythms and make people dance. I feel like that's the most positive thing I can do from my heart and I can do it till the day I die. It feels natural. And I love seeing people move together. And Jerry Garcia, when he flew over Woodstock, he said, usually when you get that many people together, it's a battlefield. But look at the music bringing people together. And we've had massive concerts and protests and get togethers with peace and music and a drum. So I'm there for the beat. Let's, let's, let's beat it all. Let's beat it together. Let's beat the drum. Awesome. Good job, Perk. Who are you throwing it to, Perk? Throw it to somebody real quick. All right, Kenny, what do you have to say? Oh, God, throw it at me. <laughs> I mean, after what, you know, Nor Norwood and Steve's both their beautiful speeches. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a lot of craziness going on there, obviously, with everybody and a lot of awareness going on. And, you know, it's all about taking these stumbling blocks and turning them to stepping stones, you know. Politics have always divided. Music unites, and I'm, you know, 
just a musician in this world, like a squirrel trying to get a nut, you know? So it's, <laughs> but I just, uh, you know, I just uh, pray for everybody out there, you know, and I think a lot of that, you know, kind of my soundtrack going to my head not all the time was by the, you know, late, great Sam Cooke, you know, change is going to come. And that's, uh, I just got to believe that, uh, you know, because there's a lot of people that have uh, already suffered and lost people in, in their lives. And, you know, it's, uh, it's just hope it all doesn't go in vain. And, you know, we get to get out of this dark cloud that's over us. So, being that, I'm going to leave it at that, you know. Over to Scotty. <laughs> well, I always like to start with the fact that there's always an upside and down. If you look deep enough, there's always an upside. And another thing I wanted to say is we all, we all realize that, again, the only thing that's real is us talking now. Everything in the past is over. So we've gone through this. We need to kind of let it go, look for the future. I'm actually very positive about things that, are, that I'm seeing happening. I think we're getting to a point. I think the most important thing is we just got to live in a state of forgiveness. Because once we do that, we start to let go and forgive people. We can start having dialogue and moving this forward. And I'm telling you, this kind of change, this is like, this is a historic time that we're living through. We're going to look back at this as, and tell your kids and this stuff, what we actually went through. This is one of those amazing times. So I'm very optimistic in a lot of ways. I think this is going to be an incredible time for entrepreneurs. I think the dialogue's already starting to happen. You're starting to see it in the communities. People are talking about it. So I'm very optimistic about this change. And I just tell everybody, forget about the past. Let's move forward and be as forgiving as we can because everybody does the best they can. They really do. Nobody gets up every day to say, gee, I want to do the worst I can. So we just have to realize that sometimes certain people are not in great mental state. They're not as, as kind as they can be, but I think if we start coming from a, kind, a place of kindness, I think we can start pulling this all back together. All right, Derek Day. Yeah. Um, Day. Yo, what's up? Uh, just, you know, there's so much, uh, damn it, why am I, I should have spoken much <laughs> earlier. <laughs> um, <laughs> everyone's- them chicken, uh, them chicken wings are good. <laughs> yeah, everyone, everyone made, I know, I was having fried, I was having some chicken right now, and um, anyway, everyone made such beautiful points, valid points, and I just, one thing I just, I could say is I love all the positivity from everyone's perspective, and Norwood, you touched on how, like, perception can change, you, no matter if it's a little, it takes time, or, you know, and I, it's very important not to just be so stone set on an ideal, uh, you know, people are uh, capable of surprises, and um, uh, and I think humanity is all about you know imperfection and surprises. And I'm I'm very just happy to be playing what you said, Perk. Just being a, a musician, someone who can try to bring people together as best he can, and uh, uh, and um, and yeah, just uh, you know, I I think. Uh, right now, I think that it's the world is changing, and it's uh, like you said, Scott's changing, and there's a whole awakening going on. A lot of we're filtering things out. We're kind of doing that, and um, I think only good can come from the end of this. So awesome, Sheila, Hello. you got some thoughts? I have some thoughts. So a little shout out to my family and friends in Minnesota. So we know a lot of, you know, a lot of this change has started there. And, you know, I have to say, and, and in all the cities, Los Angeles, New York, everywhere. Um, and I agree with what everybody has said as well. You know, it's time for change. It's happening now. And I'm just very grateful to be part of this amazing group of musicians, all of you guys, because I truly believe, like you all said, Music is that universal language, no matter what, you know, having the music and playing it, it brings people together of, of every, you know, from all over the place. And I'm, I'm excited that, that we're going to, this world is going through a big change and, you know, it's time and, and it's going to be part of history, as Scott said, and we're part of it and we're going to do our best. So thank you. So rock on. So peace to the world let's all put our vibes out there that yeah, 2020 sort of becomes history and we all move on and now 
Let's talk about some really fun stuff because I am so excited about tonight's show. We, uh, we've we got some, some dear friends, but some of the most badass musicians alive. We have the legendary Kenny Gradney, bassist of Delaney and Bonnie originally, and then of course, Little Feet forever, Bobby and the Midnights, he's played with a whole bunch of different bands. And then of course, Tony Brownagle, one of the one of the great drummers of all time, best known for his work with Bonnie Raitt and Robert Cray and Taj Mahal and the Phantom Blues Band and on and on and on. And they're here ready to join us. So I think I'm gonna bring them in right We're now. Here. And uh, let's just welcome, uh, let's see, let's see if it works. Here we go. We just are, there's, there's Tony, the one and only Tony. How you doing? Hey, oh. Tony. Hey, hey, sorry, guys. I'm just texting right now. I'll be right with you. Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> Made me wait for you. Now, where's Kenny? We're trying to bring Kenny in, but I'm not seeing him just yet. Hold on. I'm going to bring Kenny light? in. Is there too much glare here? Is this okay? Huh? No, you're good. Ah, you here. look good. All right. You look good. There's Kenny. Coming in. Let's see. Kenny is connecting to the audio. Where is that guy? Let's give him a minute. This is, by the way, Kenny's first Zoom meeting. So, oh, we, gotta, we, we, so we have we have a virgin territory. We're breaking we're breaking ground right now. Yeah. Kenny, are you there? This is my third Zoom meeting today. <laughs> Kenny, oh, raise wow. your hand. This is your Kenny, new office, brother. This is the new game. This is it. I'm afraid so, man. I'm afraid oh, yeah. So. So, well, Kenny's there. It looks like Kenny might be having a little bit of technical difficulty. Oh. I'm not sure. It says he's trying to join. Um, but in the meantime, welcome, Tony. Thank yeah. you. How, how Tony, are you doing, Tony. Tony? I'm doing good, guys. You know, I mean, I have to admit, I'm holding up pretty well. Every once in a while, you get these little dark thoughts and you go, ah, and I realize that all it is is that I'm just not playing, you know, it's like, I'm not hitting things, right, Stephen? You know what I mean? Absolutely. We can, and, and, and I'm not feeling that whole thing about when you're on stage and you're so connected to the, the pocket and the bass player and where the vocalist is right on top of you. And, and, and you know, it's, it's all moving a certain way that's out of body. That's very spiritual. And man, I am right. you know. Yeah. It is crazy. Well, so, well, Tony. I feel it too, man. I've been practicing a lot alone. It's like playing with yourself. <laughs> bring, a of, bring a box of tissues right it's okay yeah. but i like you know we're like tennis players we need to play with somebody else exactly yeah. you know yeah. so uh well it's, hopefully soon we get to perform in front of other people in a room with people yeah, yeah that'd be good. i know I, I a couple of times i went online and demonstrated some things that are like you know indigenous to my my uh style and whatnot and stuff i've played on because i got asked to hey do. my brother kenny no way <laughs> no way he did it Grab you gotta it. just adjust Thanks. your camera a little bit there you go <laughs> but we can't now we can't hear you you gotta have your mic hmm. maybe you can try and do it go. without the headphones connecting to audio oh, here he comes That's oh, oh, there. there he is i see him now uh oh he's Come frozen on. Uh oh, he froze. <laughs> Come it's on, his, Kenny. It's his, first, it's his first Zoom. We've got to, like, you know, we got to go slow. The training <laughs> wheels are on. Reason up for through. him. Be gentle. <laughs> Be gentle. <laughs> <laughs> so while, while Kenny's trying to connect, let's talk, uh, you know, a little bit. Tony, I mean, I don't know if you know. There you are. We can see you, Kenny. I don't know if you can hear us, but we can see you. Now your mute. Now your mic is muted. Hit that mic button there. There. Yeah. Welcome to the world. Hey, Danny. He's clear as a bell. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. And now he's frozen. But I'm oh. back. I'll be back. I'll be back. Oh no, you're there. Good. Your voice is there. So, Kenny Grad. Give me a second. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Give me a second. I'm coming back. There I am. There you How's go. that? Yes, Kenny. There like a you pro. go, out of boy. Yeah. Welcome, Kenny. Welcome. Thanks for coming. Yeah, buddy. Scotty, I would, I wouldn't have missed it, Scotty. I wouldn't have missed it for uh, the world. So good to see you, Mr. Gradney. It's so a pleasure, my friend. 
Yeah, man. You're not playing golf today, though. What's up? No, oh, you got Tony over there. So that's my golfing partner. <laughs> no, that's what that's that's all I've been doing like the last few weeks is golfing every day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We all got to get Nothing together and do this soon. That's it. If Nothing else of, to do. We'll be part of our Kennesons, you know, us being both Kenny. You know, <laughs> there you go. Golfing every day, you know. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Just a quick little intro here. I don't know if Tony and Kenny, if you guys know everyone, but Kenny Olson up here, uh, a dear friend of all of ours and, and just an incredible guitar player, played with Kid Rock and the Twisted Brown Trucker Band, played with the Hendrix, ex Experience Hendrix. Experience uh, Hendrix, uh, I remember that. A, a, whole yeah. bunch of, a whole bunch of amazing yeah. people. We got, we got a lot of mutual friends. I got yeah. Awesome, awesome. Very Steve, nice. Very nice. Stephen Perkins well, over here on drums. Kenny, you actually, you and Stephen played at the Mint with Eric McFadden one time. Yes. Uh, nice to see you, man. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Hey, nice shirt you got there, David. You know what? That's the little <laughs> video hour. That's the little yeah, video yeah. hour, and there aren't many of those, right? That's true. That's true. Uh, hey, Spotty. Go ahead. Yeah. Scotty, I got to tell you a story about how I met your dad. It was so funny. You know, I, I had known him. At, he was at the driving <laughs> range all the time. And I would talk to him. And, and one day, he says, I hear you're a musician. I go, oh, you're a musician. I said, what do you play? He says, I play horn. I said, which one? He goes, all of them. <laughs> I said, oh, okay. <laughs> then I found out he was like a big studio musician and everything. He goes, I got a son named Scotty. He plays sax. I'm like, oh, my God, I know your son. That's, so that's. Yeah, that was that funny. Really, that was a place that my dad would always tell me he'd see you at the driving Because he was like, yeah. he lived right down the street from that place. And so he was. Really? He was golf course. He was like a regular. I mean, that was his like thing. He'd, he'd get up and go to the golf house like yeah, the morning. Yeah. Come back. Go be there at night. Have coffee that, with the yeah. boys. Hit a bucket of yeah. boys. That was his home for years, for years. Yeah. It's a great thing. And, Seven days a week he played golf. He was a golf nut. Yeah. Yeah. Those he was a days. great guy. He was a yeah, really good man. Met, we met, right? Didn't we met? Man, I'm Michael Smotherman, right? Was that was Smotherman yes. was the first time we met? That's right? where we was, met. Yes. Oh, God. Well, let's go shopping, baby. <laughs> oh, my God. Those are great, too. <laughs> great Michael songs, Smotherman. huh? Oh, yeah. Smotherman uh, was the greatest. I mean, he just, he just yeah. passed. He was one of my all time. I know. He, I learned a ton from that guy. I mean, he was, he probably taught me, he's probably one of my top five mentors. I spent about, yeah. we spent a whole summer writing songs in my studio. We did a thing called tune a day. We write a tune a day. So it was yeah. it, record it, finish it. We, lucky we had one hit out of that, which was called too many times. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. The yeah, great part. The, the great part about Smotherman was, is he owned the room. That guy, when he yes. came in the room and he played, the whole room would just go around him. And I remember one Dude. night we were playing, we were playing music one night. And it was like um, five o'clock in the morning. We were finishing the studio, we're writing the tune. And he says, you know, Scott, we're looking away. <laughs> you know, every time you play your instrument, he says, you know, I don't care if you're just picking it up to practice, doing a bar, bar mitzvah, playing a <laughs> wedding. He says, you know, man, you got to play like you got a big dick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and that hit me, that hit me so hard. He, he said, you don't, have to have, you don't have to have one. You just got to play like you got to play like you got one. That's that, it. <laughs> that, was the, that was one of the greatest lessons I ever learned because it isn't about what you play. It's what you say, right? He didn't care. Yeah, didn't it's say, what it's you say. Of, if, if it's out of tune, it just sounds like there's more of you. Right. You know, he was one of those kind of guys. And he really was about the first takes, that honesty and thing. And uh, I mean, yes. he was really a wonderful guy, man. I, remember, I missed him. I'm, I remember working in the studio with him uh, down in Hollywood at um, uh, David Weber had a studio back up on, on the second floor off of uh, Kawanga and Sun and Hollywood. And we would go down there about 11 o'clock at night and get started. And we would work till we drive home against the traffic at daylight. You know what I mean? And we would wow. record, we'd yeah. record all night long. And he would always have a couple of new songs. And we would do, you know, we'd have a ball and be there working all night. And he was, 
he, he was he would own the room like you said once he started playing and once he started talking it's just like okay it's smotherman's room go with it you know yes uh, oh my god what that beautiful accent he had yeah and my favorite the favorite song he did the chorus was the song would stop and he would say well let's go shopping baby and i just laughed when i heard that song i yeah. that song tickled me uh, he's hilarious. He was hilarious. That was a great band, man. That band was one of my favorite bands I ever played with. You, yeah. Donnie, Win Donnie Wynn was playing. Donnie Wynn. He yeah. was wow. a cool, freaking, really unique drummer. The way wow. he yes, played, he is. Man, oh, dude, Donnie yeah. was awesome. He still plays. He just started back playing again. Yeah. He, yeah. he actually, they, they, they formed. What was the band he was in? Wait, they just reformed. Deep and all of them. They just reformed oh, again. Man. Really? The yeah, uh, they had an album out, and the title was "Seriously Affected." And I'm trying to think of the name of the band. Uh, they're great guys, and they got back together, and they're recording right now. No, right. they're cool. all in Louisiana, right? All Louis Alexandria, Louisiana. Alexandria, yeah. I, I, yeah, I get, I get yeah. to the Facebook stuff from him every once in a while. Hey, and Gradney, I wanted to ask you a question because I can't remember because we both did Mick Fleetwood's band, The Zoo, too. Yeah. Right? What fun. What fun. Oh, that was a cool band. But I can't remember. Was it you that got me that gig? I don't even know how yeah. I got that I, gig. I yeah. I don't remember. Yeah. I don't remember. That was a fun I don't band. remember. I want to keep Great introducing band. the rest of our crew to you oh, guys. Yeah, yeah. I want to make sure you got okay. Norwood Fisher over here from Fishbone. Hey, now we I know Norwood. I here. know Norwood. What's up? What's up? The both of you, right? Like, yeah. Hey, I, hey, okay. So you guys came through and blessed the stage at the Met for the 3030, truly oh, the craziest 30 year celebration. And the first night where I, the band had done B.B. King's To Know You Is To Love You in its entirety. And, awesome. and really, like, you know, having you guys there to participate with it meant the world to me. I could never even express the fullness of my gratitude for that. And just that, because that particular album to my childhood was was like I did, I did it was one of those albums that played in the background while my mom was playing cards with 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 her friends and my cousin we'd be at, we'd be at my cousin's house and she just passed away my cousin Annie Hudsmith and I didn't get a chance to invite Annie to that show but the, the, that's why I did that. That's why I wanted to do that album because it, it was it's the foundation of something that yeah. at the time I didn't know where I would go in life. And you know, so anyway, you, yeah, you guys great. came in, killed it. And I uh, forgot, I forgot that they were part of that first show. I yes, absolutely yes. completely forgot that. Yeah, we, we we hung out there for quite a while. I don't know, we played a few songs, but it felt really good and we had a great time doing it as well. I mean, you know, I mean the Met, we I go back to the beginning of the Met back when it was one room, you know, when I used to play there all the time with Padlock that, that later became Phantom Blues band and then Jack Mack and the Heart Attack. And Ooh. we would be in there in that place and, and Chaka Khan would come in and set in with us and yeah. I mean, you know, it was it, it was on fire, you know. That's that's been a great room for a long time. You know? hey, what years did you play with Jack Mack and the Heart Attack? About 91, 92, 93, 94 in there, you know, three or four years there, you know. Okay. Yeah. And, Jack um, Mack and the Heart Attack was on fire. That was, was a great band. band. Oh, yeah. Monkey ass oh. band, yeah. But Norwood, you, uh, I'm, I'm also good friends with Chris Dowd, your 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 bandmate in, in, in Fish. Um, Okay. Yeah. yeah he, we've been. He's been writing some songs, and I've been, you know, helping him record some of them in the studio and all that. And uh, great guy. I love small him. Small world. It's he's, a small he's crazy. World. I love him to death. He's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So over here we got Derek Day. You guys don't know Derek yet, but you will. Uh, Derek is an incredible musician, songwriter, guitar player, vocalist, part of this whole Think EXP crew. Uh, Derek, meet the guys. You know Scott. You know Scott, so we don't need to introduce Scott. 
Yeah. In the middle here is Sheila Conlin. Sheila is our co-producer here, helps out with the show, manages Think, and keeps them all yep. on track and moving into the right direction. So, yeah. all right. I want to say one thing about Derek Day for you guys, because you got you're gonna love Derek Day. Derek Day, we call him our art bird. This guy is the, one of the most honest musicians I've heard in years because he is the most unafraid. He's one of those guys you can say, hey, do you want to try any song you mount? He'll go, yeah, let's just do it. And he'll just go for it no matter what. what key, I love what that. Time. He's, Dude, he's the, the real deal. It's, it's the real deal. And what's so exciting about it is he kind of lifts us up and just brings such a spirit to the bandstand. And that's why we love Derek. You're going to love that guy. You'll get to know him. He's, he, that boy's he a helps, star. No he helps keep us young, too. That's right. He's got all that energy. I got to keep up, you know. <laughs> yeah. So Energy's I good. I just I just want to say first of all to Tony and Kenny, thank you guys for yeah. joining us. Like I first of all, I love yeah. you guys. You know that dearly. You and I, I want I'd like to say to both of them, thank you guys for all the great music through the years. Yeah. Love You're welcome. So much oh, stuff yeah. you guys have both done and big fan of both of you guys. So thank you for thank being you. here. Thanks. Uh, yeah. But thank but you. for me it's real special because you guys are family. And, uh, you know, Kenny, my son refers to Kenny as Uncle Kenny. And uh, Kenny was actually the first bass player human being my son ever played with when he was six years old. And uh, the other guys weren't so bad either, you know, that he was. <laughs> so uh, yeah. it's, been, it's been great. So so here we are. We have a ridiculous amount of rock and roll history right here, just with everybody right here. But um <laughs> Kenny, I'm gonna start with you. Like we, we were talking, you know, there, there's so much history with Little Feet, but I wanna talk about Festival Express because mm -hmm. that ah, train, yeah. Yeah. that train, like for people that uh, aren't aware of what Festival Express was, it was this crazy, like after Woodstock attempt to kind of take the greatest musicians in the world at the time, put them on a train, take them across Canada, play big concerts, make a lot of money. Well, it didn't quite work out like that. They didn't make the promoters didn't make <laughs> money. They lost promoters. Money, but, they were they were billionaires, so it didn't matter to them. And but and I was on the train, I just don't remember. Ah exactly. <laughs> but I mean, come on, think about like Janis Joplin, the Grateful Dead, the band, Delaney and Bonnie. Uh, I mean Buddy, buddy guy. Ah, when, you, yeah. when, you, when you get to watch the movie, the jams on the train blew away the jams on the stage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. It was, wow. it was really wild. Unbelievable. What was your, what, tell me, tell us a story. What do, what do you, from that, when you think of that, what is a story that you remember that like always pops in your head a moment because you were with all those legends for so long right there. Can you think of anything that just pops in your head? When the first time I heard the band, I was hanging out, we were smoking, and I heard all of a sudden I hear, you know, this funky, crazy shit, and I run up on the stage, and I sit on the drum riser, and I look at Levon, and he's singing, pulled in the Nazareth, you know, and I'm like, what the? And he's playing these drums this little way that he played, you know. It was amazing. And he looked down at me and smiled. That's the first time I met him. You recognize wow. these guys right here? Yeah, I met Weir and uh, Jerry, and we became really good friends at, for forever. Still good friends. Wow. It was a lot of fun. Wow, very, very cool. Jerry, and, Jerry said, Kenny, come on. And we threw the press off the train. They were. Jerry, you're spoiling my high. <laughs> Everybody out of here. So we threw the press off the train. Shut <laughs> the door. To me, the part, the part in the movie that I like the most is you guys are out of alcohol and you stop oh. in some town and everyone goes yeah. down and you buy the entire liquor store, including, liquor their, store displays, including their displays. My, my, <laughs> my, my older brother... Uh, Gabe, he opened SIR with Ken and Dalton, and he was oh, wow. Delaney's production. He was his production manager. 
and um, he was he walks into there, you know, this six four, you know, marine ex marine sniper. And he has a fistful of money, and um, I can't think of the, the promoter who's with us. And we're all looking scraggly. My brother hands him this money, and the guy goes, "Tell me when we spend this." And they had this huge bottle of Canadian Club in the window on a on this. It was a display, and it was on this stool. <laughs> one of the roadies, one of the dead roadies, goes over and he picks it up and he adds it to his buddy and he grabs the stool. And the guy goes, "Wait, wait, wait!" And and the promoter puts his hand on his shoulder. He goes, "Just write down how much it is. You got the money in your hand." It was amazing. We just literally emptied the the, the store. <laughs> it was it Crazy. was unbelievable, unbelievable. Merry that. Christmas. Yeah. It sounds like, like mini bars. Like, oh yeah, road, Merry right? Christmas. Merry and Christmas. and the promoters, the the mayors, and all the kids were they were really pissed, and they were all that whole riot thing was about the dead having to pay the fourteen dollars to see the dead, so the dead would go to, into the park, set up the stage, and do a private show. Well. The booking agent, Alan Pariser, there's Alan Stroh, one of them, he had gone to the Metropole in New York and brought all these strippers, and they were on the train. You, didn't, you don't see them in the thing. And so when the dead would go and do this private show, they have a stripper on each side of the stage dancing. It was the wildest thing you ever saw. Sounds like Jane's addiction. <laughs> yeah. The it, rock uh, days, we always had strippers. Pretty wild. Yeah. <laughs> strippers, man. <laughs> Tony, Tony. The days before cell phones. Remember, we didn't have cell yeah. phones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's Tony. right. That's an amazing hey. story. Tony, Tony, tell you guys wait, go wait. way back. Can Tony, you, Tony. Yeah. Tell him about tell him about the band that you were playing in that you that you quit up in San Francisco that got so huge. What's his name? Um, trying to get him to play. Huh? We were trying to get him to play up at the club. Oh. You know who I'm talking oh, about. Oh, 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 Huey. Yeah. Huey Lewis. Oh. Tony played in Huey Lewis and goes, hey, I'm going to go for something uh, to make some more money. <laughs> that was, that's not exactly correct. Uh, uh, Huey and I okay. met in London. He was in a band called Clover. And I got hired by Mutt Langa as I was doing a lot of studio work when I lived in London. And Mutt Langa hired me to come play on the record. And they got rid of the, uh, the the drummer just for the record and I played on the record and I got to be really good friends with all those guys in Clover and they lived in Marin and years later when I was uh, working with my band from England uh, up in, uh, in Colorado and we were doing a record and I wanted to take a, some time off because the producer was like a, a real dick and I was like you know I don't want to be around this guy anymore so I said hey Gary instead of me getting in your hair and, and, and pissing you off and you pissing me off why don't you just buy me a ticket to San Francisco so I go over to San Francisco and hang out there for four or five days with Huey. And we had a ball and he had a, he had, they had a Monday night jam thing at that club. And um, oh, I'll remember the name in a second in Marin there. And, and so we got to be, you know, we'd already been good friends. And about a year, a couple of years later, then I moved back, back from London and I'm done with living in England and Huey's putting a band together. And at, right around the same time, I was asked to possibly be in the Doobie brothers. I wasn't sure what I was going to do. And he calls me up and says, hey, man, I'm putting a band together. You, you want to be in my band? And I go, oh, let me let me think about it. who else is in the band. Oh, I know him. Oh, yeah, I know him. OK, you know, and he goes, you know, it's, uh, we're putting a band together. I think we can get a record deal and all that stuff. I went, yeah, good. Good luck. And so about a week later, he called me back. He says, you want to do this? I said, Huey, I've been thinking about it, man. I'm not really sure I want to be in a Marin County bar band right now. Oh. And, and, and <laughs> Hello. This day, they don't play in the bar. They own it. They own the bar. Right? And to this day, <laughs> we play golf together sometimes. And 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 if there's a stranger in the group or whether whatever, and someone says, "How do you guys meet?" And Huey goes, "I asked him to be in my band. He told me he didn't want to be in my fucking bar band." You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you guys first meet, Kenny and Tony? God. Tony remembers, I don't. We, we were, you know, I, when I started playing. Oh, oh, it was uh, Jimmy Barnes, wasn't well, it? That's where we got to be good friends. We met before when I was playing with Bonnie. We, we've never been friends. Let's get that straight. Oh, we've okay. never been friends. <laughs> <laughs> before, we started, brothers. 
before we started pretending that we liked each other. We liked each uh, other, yes. <laughs> uh, he was working, I was working with Bonnie Raitt and he was working with Little Feet and, and they were, you know, very relative bands in the, in the scene around here. And then we both got hired to play on a Jimmy Barnes record out in Woodland Hills at that uh, Rumbo Studios. And so that's we, where we did it. Yeah, we started hanging out around the pool table, him and I playing, playing pool whenever we weren't recording. And we got to be pals. The next thing you know, one thing or another, he met his wife, Yosha, and blah, blah, blah. And, and we've been friends ever since. So, huh. yeah, long time. Nice. Do you guys awesome. play a lot together? Music? Yeah. Occasionally? Uh, occasionally. We have a, we have a, a, a golf band. Oh. That, uh, <laughs> and uh, hey. it, it's called the Boogie Five. <laughs> and when we, when we first put it together, it was uh, Tony and I, Paul Barrere, Johnny Lang, Scott Thurston, and Robbie Krieger. Wow. And a uh, little by Scott goes, I don't want to do this anymore. I hate golf, you know. Scott Thurston, I hate golf. I'm never going to play again. And then Johnny Lang's wife got pregnant, and they moved to Ventura. And uh, Paul passed. So it's just Tony and I and Krieger and, you know. We yeah. still do it I'll, every I'll, year. I'll join you guys when I'm out there on that one. <laughs> Rob, Rob, Robbie's I'm a good friend of mine. Sounds like Robbie you and I did Alice Cooper's golf outing. Yeah, everywhere. Robbie's a wonderful guy. Oh, yeah. He, you're you're welcome anytime. I would love we had, that. Um, we had, what's his name, Bob? I can't think of his name. He was on, he took second place on that TV show. He's got his Israeli name. I mean, uh, Arab name, Bob. I'll think of it in a second. Guitar player, fantastic oh, yeah, blues yeah, guitar yeah, yeah. player. Yeah. Uh, Laith Al Saudi. Oh yeah, Laith's a buddy of mine from Detroit, Ann Arbor. Yeah, Laith, I, I just did some tracks with him uh, on his record and he sat in with us, with Robbie and all of us. Wow. And yeah. he, he just stood there staring at Robbie with his mouth open, you know, and Robbie's, Robbie's so laid back, as you know. Oh, he oh, was yeah. pretty. He's, He's so like Robbie and I were on a Hendrix tours together back in the day, and then uh, Alice Cooper had me and Robbie play guitar in his band for the golf outing. You know, and it was uh, I wish I would have played golf better that day. All those guys yeah. in Arizona, they play like 36 holes a day, and I'm like, a day, yeah, so out of the blue, and I hadn't played yet that <laughs> year. And I got up there and was just like, you know, great. <laughs> and Robbie was weaned, he was weaned on the golf course, he was weaned oh, yeah. on Riviera. He's a natural. He is. Does he still play good? He, what's his handy? Oh, yeah. yeah. Robbie still plays good. Yeah, he does. He, he does. He plays very all, good golfer. Little next slide, man. The guy that. Yeah. Little next slide. He's got yeah. a. He's got in, his, in, in his recording studio, he's got a, a one room dedicated to one. What is that golf the thing he's got that. This oh, he's got a he's got the whole screen and yeah. that you can oh, play yeah. golf to all the country yeah. clubs and stuff. Yeah. I was watching, we, my wife had me watching Laurel Canyon last night, and uh, they did a whole thing on the doors, and Robbie, when he was young and everything, it was really wild to see. How's Yosha? How's she doing? She's doing good. We're, we're reopening. We're reopening it. We're going to have the wood taken off the next few days. She's kind of pissed at me because I, I dropped a really expensive piece of... Uh, uh, what is it? Um, Amethyst. Pistol. Amethyst. Yeah. How did you know? <laughs> you told me. <laughs> I broke two of them, boy. <laughs> thousands of dollars. She is mad as hell at me. Woo! Woo! Hey, Tony, what are you doing these days? You're producing a lot of stuff. Are you working with anybody that we should be uh, uh, that, that's up and coming that, that we haven't heard? Eric Burton. Eric Burton, he's up and coming. Yeah. Up and coming. Up, he's up and out of here. Eric's moving to Greece in the next couple of weeks. Uh, he's yeah. checking really? out. He moved to Athens and everything. Uh, I had dinner with him the other night. Uh, and he's 79 this year. And he, he'll be 80 next May. And I told my girlfriend, I said, we're going to Athens uh, next year in May to, for his 80th birthday. So, you know. But Eric's doing great. Um, I'm working with. I'm finishing up a record call by a guy named Phil Columbato, and it's actually being mastered right this minute as we speak. It's being mastered, and um, 
couple of other things that I'm I'm waiting on things to open up again so I can get there's two different artists that want to come into town and and and, and uh, do some uh, recording and and um, I'd be working solid right now if I could you know but uh, I'm I'm putting together things at the house um, and we had that meeting the other day David and Scotty were there about this this app uh, that could be an interesting situation and it's developing and coming along and. Um, uh, I'm dying to play, man. I'm just, you know, I just want a live, some live fun gigs and something to do. And, you know, I'm dying Getting, to go to a Dodger game with you guys. Soon. Well, I, I was just going to yeah. say, usually, usually we'd Let's be at go. a Dodger game right about now having a beer and a hot dog, yeah. you know, so. They put a hundred million dollars into the place. I hope it looks better. Yeah. Exactly. As long as it's blue. <laughs> I, I, just, I want to say one more thing about uh, Kenny and, and, and playing and everything for a minute there whenever um, uh, I would get a chance to play with Kenny with the funky feet with just Paul and Fred and Kenny and man I have to tell you I've been a huge Little Feet fan since the very band first came out oh, big time. you know I mean huge huge fan I own every album that they've ever made and um and I, and Richie was a very good friend of mine. We were close, Ooh. and so um, seeing him pass away was really hard, you know, for a, a, an incredible, drum, a most incredible drummer, completely unique to his own self. And um, yeah. but the guys let me play with them a few times, and um, man, I had a ball playing with Funky Feet. It was just the best. Boy. He can well, he can second them. line like crazy, and you know, uh, you can, oh, dude, he was the second line king. I used to love. He him. was unbelievable, oh, dude, unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I just want to say, you know, uh, my Richie was my son's mentor, as Kenny, yeah. Yeah. as Tony was, as Steven was, as, you know, all you guys. But Richie really was, and, and all you guys, all the Little Feet guys were just really cool to my kid when he was a kid. Like, you could have said, get out of here, kid, don't bug me. But instead, you brought him in. And by 10 years old, Matthew could play Little Feet tunes. Like that's how he learned how to play the drums was by listening to Little Feet records and playing along. Hey, listen, listening to Richie and trying to learn how to play is not a bad thing. No, no. <laughs> what I'm saying is I love you dearly. You, you, you mean literally I could never really ever articulate how I really feel because you know, I, my kid is who he is today in a big part because of you, Kenny, and, and Tony, too, but Kenny and Richie and, and you guys, I just... You Thank know. you, man. I appreciate that. I appreciate your, that. Your, your son used to call okay. me every once in a while before he moved up north and, you know, just to check in, you know. It was really cool. Because That's he, awesome. I feel, I feel <laughs> good that, yeah. like, like, in the middle of the afternoon, I get this call. I felt like like Uncle Kenny would feel. I felt like <laughs> Uncle Tony, you know what I mean? And he would call me up, and we would just bullshit, and he'd ask me questions, and then, you know, next thing you know, when we're on the uh, phone for 45 minutes or an hour or whatever, you know. Yeah. Yeah, he's a very, very good kid. He was a great drummer. He's a great drummer as well. I mean, you know. Yeah, yeah, yes, really good. Hey, I, I tell you, I tell you a story, uh, Dave. He, he drug me out to Downey somewhere because he knew I used to shoot a lot of pool as a kid, and he he knew what kind of pool cue I had, and he took me to this guy who was mentored by the Hawaiian guy that made my pool cue. And he's like, he's this, this, he's a poolaholic now. I don't, I don't shoot pool anymore. I used to have a table in my house, but I, I play golf and that's it. Yeah. But I still have my pool cue. I had it made when I was like 17. I still have it. But he went and had one made and he is so happy with it. But I know he doesn't get to play anymore because he's married with children. <laughs> exactly. I'm a grandpa. Ah, That's it. Grandpa. Hey, I'm a grandpa. I know you are. I heard. I heard. How about that? It's amazing. That's amazing. So yeah, what I else? I just I was just gonna say I'm you're thinking about Richie Hayward. I, I've just been going through my archives, digitizing everything, and I found uh -huh. this tape the guy gave me from the Palomino that I played with when it was the band was Richie, Finnegan, uh Bob Glob, uh yeah. Um, um, Warren, Paul Warren was playing guitar, and my what? son, and it was this screaming tape, man, and dude, Richie and Glob you say, sound you said really Paul, good together, too. <laughs> Paul Warren was on guitar? Yeah. Paul yeah. Warren was playing guitar, and it's That's a really another, good tape. Detroit brother. He's Detroit. That guy can play. You know, He's a you great know, player. 
Did you know Paul Warren was on, he's on Papua's Rolling Stone when he was 17. Wow. Oh my 17 God. years yeah. old. Yeah, yeah. Him, him, and, him and Dennis, you know, Coffee are the two guitar players on that. And wow. Then, That's and, something. Uh, yeah, he was a uh, little 17 year old and got to be in on that session. And that's some of his guitar work on that song, which is yeah. a lot of cool stuff. Great right. guitar player. I got to play with him for a while with Teresa James. He would come in. Yeah. And player with him. He's, oh, yeah. He always, you know, he always was one of those like, like he's, I've been in Nashville often, you know, for the last 10 years after I quit Kid Rock and Paul's been down there and I, you know, and I see him here and there and we run each other and, uh, and every time I see someone in Nashville, man, I went and saw this guy, Paul Warren, play guitar last night. I'm like going, blew your fucking mind, didn't he? And they're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's got an old 58 Strat plugged into like just an amp, no pedals, just. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, hey, uh, Kenny. Go ahead. Hey, Kenny Olson, where, where do you live? Uh, well, I've been out in California with these guys back and forth for the last couple of years, but I'm from Detroit originally, but I've been in Nashville for the last 10 years. And, Are you uh, in Nashville right now, now? No, right now I'm up in northern I, Michigan in Traverse City up in the woods here. Whoa! I noticed that. And, uh, I know that. That's great up there, man. <laughs> it's that's gorgeous it is, it is. up there. That's not oh, a fake oh. backdrop. That's not a fake backdrop. That's no. Where that's up. I know. I was quite jealous. I was looking at that. That's beautiful. I've, I've been, you guys will crack up, too. I've been driving all the guys at the golf shops up here crazy because I've been had nothing to do, no tour dates. I'm usually being gone all the time, and I'm like – pulling all these old antique clubs because I like collecting antiques and stuff and I constantly, mm -hmm. hey, can you put some more grips on these ones today? These guys are like, this kid needs to go back on the road. He's like, fuck everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm like, I'm like, I got nothing better to do in my time than go yeah. and grip my clubs and shit, you know? <laughs> Did you tell him, we all want to be on the road right now? <laughs> I know, I told him. It's like, I, you know, yeah. it's just, just trying to, you know. We got we got a viewers, a couple just, of viewers that want to join us. Do we yeah, want to? Kenny, Kenny Lewis is out there. Our brother Kenny's on. Kenny Lee. Oh, we got, Kenny yeah. Lee. Kenny Lee. Lee. Come on, bro. We come got on, brother. Come on. I would like to join Kenny us. Kenny Lee, where are you? I'm gonna bring. I'm gonna bring in John. I don't know. Okay. We're gonna bring in Kenny John. Lee, you there? I gotta. Walk. I'm gonna. I'm gonna carry this iPad over to the car because it's raining on me. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, John, what up? There it is. Are we good? What's up, Kenny? Soho. We got Soho. Soho. So 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 we got the whole A team. I miss you guys. I miss you. Hey, Johnny. <laughs> So for those of you who don't know Soho, Soho is a good pal of ours. Probably, I got to say, one of the kindest, nicest human beings I've ever met. I love this guy to death. He's out of New York, and uh, we've been working on I would think so. If he's, if he's named Soho, I would think he's from New York. <laughs> he goes by Soho Johnny, yeah. And man, he does all these great events, and he's always a big supporter of all the things that we do. Uh, we love you, Johnny. You're the best, man. You're great. Do you have a uh, question? For us, Johnny, do you have a question? Kenny Lee. Well, I just try. I just tagged into the, the the tail end of it. I guess everybody's talking about. I, I, are we talking about like the all of the unrest of what's going on and that, that that type of that topic? I guess it's kind of unavoidable, right? No, we're talking more about golf and getting back on the road. Yeah. We did talk about <laughs> golf and getting back on the road. Well, I heard I heard some kind comments about Scott's dad about golf earlier that sounded great if the, the, the apple doesn't fall far, far from the tree mm -hmm. and, uh, getting back on the road well that's kind of like you know that's kind of like the uh, theme song the underlying theme of what we're all about and exactly I know here and it's all about listen uh, Scott says this about me and you know it takes a bird of birds of a feather uh, as they say you know, you try to take lemons and make lemonade from it and distribute it, right? So that's, that's what we're all here to do because the music is the tie that binds humanity, right? And we've just got to keep yep. summoning, just play that pipe like the Pied Piper and lead and be role models to each other in this, these trying times. And, you know, if you tie it with talent and, and a sense of humanity, which I know all you guys do, you know, it's my privilege to know many of you and those that I'm just mm -hmm. meeting right now. So God bless you guys. All Thank right. you, man. Well, Thank you. you. We are running down to the very end of the show here. And Kenny Lee, I was going to see if we could bring this. Kenny Lewis, are you online there, brother? 
not in the waiting room, but traditionally, oh, okay. we, we'll get him next time. We got to bring Kenny on one of these times. We'll, yeah, we'll I'm, wait, I'm trying to find up. him. But Derek, I'm going in for rain. I'm getting rained on right now. Oh, <laughs> Derek Day yeah. over here. You got your acoustic guitar. Normally, we we try to end the show with some kind of music. As we all know, it's very difficult to play music on the internet, especially yes. an app like Zoom. No syncing. <laughs> so the quality is not always the best. But Derek Day, why don't you take us out? You got a, you got a song to. Uh, yeah okay well this is a little last minute but i thought hey, you guys thank you though for being on the show with us yes man. thank you guys so absolutely much. We we love you guys. Guys. so cool thanks for inviting us again anytime anytime, anytime. 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 now i, I know go. where you are i'm but coming to golf with you guys real hey, can, can i get can i get this, can i get one question to tony yeah bro yes. Was, when was the first time in your life that you ever put your face in it? <laughs> um, oh yeah. I, I've been long I've been living long enough to say that I don't remember. That's a good that's a good question there, Goldwood. <laughs> Very Sorry, good man. question. You, hey, oh, and, and, <laughs> Oh, hey, Kenny, no. when was the first time you put your finger in it? <laughs> I was very young. <laughs> very young. All right, on that note, on yeah. that note we've just crossed. My wife's in the next room, so I can't say a whole lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Derek, let's see. Let's let uh, let's Derek give us something here. What do you give got? Give us some, Mr. Day. Okay, sure thing. Uh, this is, um, I thought it'd be fun or, or interesting to play uh, something that's not meant for a 12 string guitar. This is actually an album that our our guy Stephen Perkins played on just so I think you played on Know Your Enemy on the first Rage Against the Machine album. I figured I'd, I'd try to play a little Rage Against the Machine song. Well, okay, here we go. On a 12 string acoustic guitar. Perfect. Fire away. If I don't know, know your enemy. That's too. That's too crazy. So here's a here's the closing track of that album. Oh no no, that's freedom. Here's one of the closing tracks. All right, all right, all right. We built a building, yeah. Our people still dwell in hell. Locked in cells, structures of cell. Mad is a story I tell. Home, can we wait? Come on, Cena, what's at stake? Action for reaction. If your mind's in a somewhat complacent state, then you need a checkup. This is a stick up. Our freedom or your life. But I wish I could be peaceful, but there cannot be no sequel. Now, nah, now nah, freedom must be fundamental. In Johannesburg, South Central, on the mic, because someone should tell them to kick in the tongue, because you're brilliant. Thought you get with the hard line, gotta fill your mind. Thoughts and battles fought, and lessons taught. Get the witness, get a fist like a gymnast. Raise my fist and resist. A sleep till we stand in the midst of a war. Gotta get in mind, gotta get more. Keeping the mind warm against the norm. What does it offer me? I think often nothing but a coffin. Gotta get erect till the next never swing on a rope from here to the cape of no hope. Now freedom must be fundamental in Johannesburg, a South Central. On the mic, cause someone should tell them to kick in the township rebellion while stand on a silent platform. Fight the war. Fuck the norm.
the silent platform, fight the war. All right, there you go. Yeah. Eric. <laughs> Beautiful. Day music online. Beautiful. Thank you, X. We love that. Never ceases to blow us away. I love that. <laughs> Thank you, you D-Day. Back to your chicken. Beautiful, man. Back to chicken. <laughs> <D -Day. laughs> so on that note, Daddy, my man. we are kind of getting down to it here. It's It's been a great show, Tony and Kenny. I just, uh, you know, like, honestly, I love you guys. Thank and you, man. Always a pleasure. Thanks so much. Yosha hug for me. And uh, on that note, I think we're, anyone else got anything they want to close out with here tonight? We I should be in Scotland. <laughs> I'd say I, I miss all you guys and uh, hope we can make some music live together real yeah. soon. Let's and what I want to say, one thing real quick is we've got some, I haven't even told everybody, but not this Thursday, not the next Thursday, but the following Thursday. We're good to go. We're gonna do something real wild. We got a, an incredible thing, so everybody's got to come down. Not this Thursday, the twenty fifth. Okay. It's gonna be a great one, and we'll we'll fill you in. So don't miss it. All right, I'll be and there. I want to thank all my friends. I can't believe it, man. I shared my thing. Everybody, all these people came on. It was great. Thank all you right. all very much for supporting us. And of very course, much. we want to thank EXP. Thank Think EXP. We want to thank From the Earth. Basically, uh, check us out at fromtheearth.com if you're not familiar with us. Our next show, as Scott just said, is two weeks from tonight, June 25th. And uh, I love you guys, all you guys. Be safe. And on that note, let's take it out right here. Here we go. Thank you. Every day is, every day is a blessing and a gift. Yeah, yeah. buddy. Bye-bye. <laughs> and there you have it. Oh, there you have it. All you guys. I love you all. We'll Thank see you, you soon. Johnny, Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you, guys. Nice.